In the vast expanse of the Pacific Ocean lies the island nation of Tuvalu. This idyllic archipelago is home to a vibrant culture and a people deeply connected to their land and sea. However, Tuvalu's existence is under threat from rising sea levels. Climate change is an everyday reality for Tuvaluans. Rising seas are swallowing land, contaminating fresh water, and threatening survival. The highest point on its largest island barely reaches 15 feet above sea level. Tuvalu is a stark reminder of the urgent need for global action. The primary culprit behind Tuvalu's plight is the relentless rise of sea levels, a consequence of global warming. As greenhouse gas emissions trap heat, the planet warms, leading to melting glaciers and thermal expansion of seawater. These phenomena raise global sea levels, threatening coastal communities and island nations. For Tuvalu, the rate of sea level rise is particularly alarming. The surrounding sea level has risen by approximately 6 millimeters per year. Coastal erosion is eating away at the shorelines, forcing communities to retreat inland. King tides are becoming more frequent and severe, flooding homes and infrastructure. Faced with this existential threat, the people of Tuvalu are demonstrating remarkable resilience and resourcefulness as they adapt to their shrinking world. Traditional knowledge is guiding the islanders in their efforts to mitigate the impacts of climate change. One of the most pressing challenges is the increasing scarcity of fresh water. Communities are constructing rainwater catchment systems to store precious rainwater. Families are adapting their agricultural practices to grow crops above the reach of saltwater intrusion. Coastal communities are erecting seawalls to hold back the encroaching tides. As the impacts of climate change intensify, migration is increasingly being seen as a necessary, albeit painful, adaptation strategy for the people of Tuvalu. The prospect of leaving their homeland, their culture, and their ancestors behind is a heart-wrenching decision, but one that many feel is becoming unavoidable. New Zealand has emerged as a primary destination for Tuvaluan climate migrants. The country has a special immigration category for Pacific Islanders, allowing a limited number of Tuvaluans to immigrate each year. While this offers a lifeline for some, the number of visas available is woefully inadequate to accommodate the potential number of climate migrants from Tuvalu and other vulnerable island nations. The decision to migrate is fraught with emotional, cultural, and economic challenges. Leaving behind one's homeland is never easy, but it is particularly difficult for the Tuvaluan people, whose culture and identity are deeply intertwined with their land and sea. The loss of their physical home also represents a loss of their cultural heritage, as traditional practices and knowledge are intrinsically linked to the environment from which they originated. Section 5. A Daring Legal Gambit In the face of these unprecedented challenges, Tuvalu is taking a bold and innovative approach, not only adapting to the impacts of climate change, but also fighting for its very survival on the international stage. The nation is pursuing a groundbreaking legal strategy aimed at preserving its sovereignty and statehood, even if its islands become submerged beneath the rising tides. Tuvalu's legal strategy centers around the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, or UNCLOSE, the international treaty that governs the oceans and maritime rights. The convention defines a state's territorial waters, exclusive economic zone and continental shelf, granting coastal states specific rights and responsibilities within these maritime zones. Tuvalu argues that its maritime boundaries, as defined under UNCLOSE, should remain fixed, even if its land territory is lost due to rising sea levels. This would allow Tuvalu to retain control over its vast exclusive economic zone, a vital source of revenue and resources for the nation. This legal argument, if successful, could set a precedent for other island nations facing similar existential threats from climate change. Section 6. Sovereignty Beyond Land, the Maritime Dimension Tuvalu's legal strategy represents a paradigm shift in statehood and sovereignty. As climate change redraws coastlines and threatens island nations, Tuvalu's case highlights the maritime dimension of statehood and their vulnerability to climate change impacts. By asserting its maritime boundaries and sovereignty, Tuvalu challenges the international community to recognize evolving statehood. Section 7. Safeguarding a Blue Economy Tuvalu's maritime exclusive economic zone, spanning over 900,000 square kilometers of the Pacific Ocean, 
is a vast reservoir of marine biodiversity and a vital source of revenue for the nation. The tuna-rich waters of Tuvalu's EEZ attract fishing fleets from around the world, generating significant income for the government through fishing licenses and access agreements. This revenue stream is a lifeline for Tuvalu's economy, providing essential funds for education, healthcare, and infrastructure development. The sustainable management of these marine resources is therefore paramount to the long-term well-being of the Tuvaluan people, both now and in the future. Tuvalu is actively engaged in regional and international efforts to combat illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing, which poses a significant threat to the health of fish stocks and the livelihoods of coastal communities. By strengthening fisheries management, promoting sustainable fishing practices, and collaborating with international partners, Tuvalu is working to safeguard its blue economy and ensure the long-term sustainability of its marine resources. A Section 8, Holding Back the Tide, A Race Against Time While pursuing its legal and diplomatic efforts, Tuvalu is also implementing practical measures on the ground to adapt to the immediate impacts of rising sea levels. These adaptation measures are designed to buy time, protect critical infrastructure, and enhance the resilience of communities facing the encroaching tides. One of the most visible adaptation measures is the construction of seawalls and other coastal defenses. These structures are designed to dissipate wave energy, reduce erosion, and protect coastal communities from flooding. However, seawalls are costly to build and maintain, and they can have negative environmental impacts, such as altering sediment flow and damaging coral reefs. In addition to hard infrastructure solutions, Tuvalu is also investing in nature-based solutions, such as mangrove restoration and beach nourishment. Mangrove forests act as natural buffers against storm surges and erosion, while beach nourishment projects help to replenish sand on eroding beaches. These nature-based solutions offer a more sustainable and cost-effective approach to coastal protection, working in harmony with nature rather than against it. Section 9. The Human Cost of Climate Change Behind the statistics and the scientific projections lies the very real human cost of climate change. For the people of Tuvalu, climate change is not an abstract concept. It is a daily reality that is forcing them to confront profound questions about their future, their identity, and their place in the world. The constant threat of inundation, the loss of land and livelihoods, and the prospect of displacement weigh heavily on the minds of the Tuvaluan people. The emotional toll is immense, as generations of cultural heritage and ancestral ties to the land are threatened by the rising tides. The stories of the Tuvaluan people are a powerful reminder that climate change is not just an environmental issue. It is a human rights issue, a social justice issue, and a moral issue. The world has a moral obligation to act, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and to support vulnerable communities on the front lines of climate change. Section 10, a global call to action. The plight of Tuvalu is a stark reminder that climate change is a global crisis that requires a global response. The international community must come together with urgency and determination to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, support adaptation efforts in vulnerable countries, and uphold the rights of climate migrants. The Paris Agreement, adopted in 2015, provides a framework for global action on climate change. The agreement aims to limit global warming to well below 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels, with efforts to limit the increase to 1.5 degrees Celsius. To achieve these goals, countries have committed to reducing their greenhouse gas emissions and providing financial and technical support to developing countries. However, Current commitments are insufficient to avert the worst impacts of climate change. More ambitious action is needed, including a rapid transition to renewable energy, investment in sustainable transportation and agriculture, and protection of forests and other carbon sinks. Section 11, Tuvalu, a beacon of resilience. Despite the immense challenges they face, the people of Tuvalu remain steadfast in their determination to preserve their culture, their homeland, and their way of life. Their resilience, their resourcefulness, and their unwavering commitment to their island home serve as an inspiration to the world. Tuvalu's story is a powerful reminder that even in the face of adversity, hope endures. The human spirit, when confronted with seemingly insurmountable challenges, 
has the capacity to adapt, to innovate, and to persevere. Tuvalu's fight is not just for its own survival, it is a fight for the future of all humanity, a fight for a just and sustainable world where all people can thrive in harmony.